The following programming is sponsored by Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station, its management, or Beasley Media Group. Welcome to Bloomer's in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Frank called the hotline. It's having a major weed problem. Richard is also having weed problems, but his weeds are in his lawn. Once a Bloomer's employee, always part of the Bloomer's family, a former employee texted me about insect damage on her sunflower, but that's not where the story ends. We'll tell you more in our third segment. We received a call to the Bloomer's in a Garden hotline about a problem that is common to gardeners who grow zucchini squash. And finally, this week's What's Bugging You segment, we're talking about the spotted lanternfly again. The current instar stage should have you start banding trees, and we'll explain what that means in our last segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 685 one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. And we'll see you in the garden. Have you ever dealt with dead areas in your lawn that pull up like carpet? You most likely are the victim of the Japanese beetle larva eating your roots of your turf. Grubs sever the roots from the crown of the grass plant, causing the turf from being unable to take in water. It leaves you with a dead carpet of grass. Fertilum is a solution to stop those pesky grubs from destroying your lawn. High Yield Grub Free Zone is a season-long grub control that protects your grass from the damage caused by grubs, mole crickets, larva of the European crane fly, green june beetles, bill bugs, and many more subsurface insects. So if you use VPG High Yield Grub Free Zone to protect your lawn, It's an easy-to-use product and does all the work. Simply spread it and water it in. It's that easy. Your lawn will be protected from grubs and dozens of other lawn-feeding insects. Use the product the professionals use, high-yield grub-free zone. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's high-yield grub-free zone and expect to have the best-looking lawn in the neighborhood. Green Acres Nursery and Garden Center, West County Line Road, Colmar, Pennsylvania. Herbins Garden Center, Chestnut Street, MS Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Laurel Oak Garden Center, Thompson Mill Road, Marlton, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Weeds can be overwhelming, Uh, and it can get out of control quickly. When it gets hot, boom, Boom. they're everywhere. And you got to remember that. All right, so if you leave one, one weed plant, and it goes and it flowers and it starts a seed head. You know, it's an old biblical thing that, right. you know, the number. Anyway, that where it can produce hundreds, if not thousands, of other new weeds. So if you have a nice clean bed, yeah. right? right? Weed comes up uh-huh. and then that starts one and then one starts a hundred, then a hundred starts a thousand. Keeps so growing and growing. it's, yeah. you know, keeping keeping that one weed out is pretty important. Yeah. So Frank called, right? Mm-hmm. And he had a problem. Listen to what his call was. Hi, my name is Frank in Philadelphia. 
I'm not sure a garden question or not. I can't even have a garden. I have weeds like crazy. Mm. No matter what I put on them, it doesn't kill them. I have no idea what to do. Can you please help me? It's a mess. I used to have a small garden, but the weeds won. <laughs> I, I can't do it. They're not just in the dirt area where I had the garden before. The cracks of cement are all over the place. I tried sprays to buy at Home Depot or something like that. I tried bleach. Mm. It doesn't do anything. They're immune to it. I have no idea what to do. I'm having real typical time. Again, I just left a message, but I heard your show for the first time today. I liked it. Uh, can someone just give me a call and let me know? I really appreciate it. Please, please, please call. <laughs> Seriously. I hate these weeds. I want to get those flowers again. Thank you very much. All right. Wow. Freaking He's desperate. Frank. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he... Frank, we know what the problem is. Oh, yeah. You've got weeds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, and like we said at the top, we were talking about how <laughs> one seed produces one plant, one plant yeah. produces 100 plants, right. and then 100 plants produces thousands of plants. plants. And it gets out of control. And that right. he's in the city, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So add to that, there's not an area of, of soil for when things are blowing along the concrete, that seed just is like a tumble and tumbleweed yeah. and ends into the first open area of space that it can germinate, see, yeah. which happens to be Frank's address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. right. They love Frank's address. That's right. <laughs> but so he's got to tell you yeah. down. I, I mean, Home Depot, I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah. there, there, there are some great city garden centers, um, mm-hmm. city planter mm-hmm. in uh, Northern Liberties. Okay. They're, they're, they're a good garden center. Anyway. But the trick is is using glyphosate, which is Roundup, which are making a lot of lawyers rich right, right. now. Yep. It is that a is. safe product. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you just have to use it according to the instructions. Mm-hmm. And that the way that it works is that it will kill the plant root and all. And now we're talking about weeds. Right. Now, you talked to Frank. I did. And what did he say? You know, he said he was trying to use stuff and none of it worked. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. What happened? He, you know, he used a Roundup, but, but, you know, the following year they came back. Well, that's what happens. Yeah, that's what happens. I, I think he's, you know, he's thinking that Roundup is going to take care of it forever. But it doesn't, right. You know, it doesn't. No. It will only round up and clean up. They will only control the weeds that it hits. Mm-hmm. And that any seed that's in the ground that germinates, not going to stop it. No. So what he, I like is Clean Up by Bonna. It has a product. It's called Clean Up 365, and it has a weed preventer in it. So when you use that, it's going to prevent the weeds that are in the soil germinate? from from germinating. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I've used it myself. Works mm-hmm. fantastic. Really good, We've huh? used it at the garden center. Mm-hmm. And again, it, it's Clean Up 365, so 365 days a year. You get it? Yes. <laughs> Clever <Real> marketing. <laughs> yeah, real easy. And, and then that's why we also recommend Preen. Yeah. Right? From Greenview. Preventer, yep. Preen is, is another. It's a weed preventer, so yep. it's a two-stage approach. It's yeah. You want to kill what's there, right. and then you want to use a weed preventer yeah. to prevent it from coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so what uh, you, my friend... Have some extracurricular notes I see there. Oh, yes, Come I on, do. Yeah. share with me. What does it say? Well, you know, we need to who, know. Who is it from, first of all? Who's it's from uh, Rutgers Extension. Okay. You know, cooperative Extension. So Rutgers University, New yes, Jersey. New Jersey, yep. yay. And one of the things it says here, we need to know what, you know, what the biology of the weeds are. Right, what, what are type the, of weed. Yeah, what type of weed, you know, what type of weed it is. Now, we have annual weeds and we also have perennial weeds. Yes. Okay, there are two different types. The annual weeds grow for for one season and survive by producing seeds that'll germinate the following year. Crabgrass okay. is probably the most right. popular, most right. famous. Chickweed. Chickweed. Yep. Winter annuals like chickweed and hembit, they, yep. they'll germinate in the fall and produce seeds the following spring. <laughs> that, that's right. Yep. And you and I always recommend in lawn, now this is going, probably we should save this for Next Richard's yeah. segment, but again, it's using a preventative especially like the sidewalk cracks mm-hmm. and the things like we were talking about how the seeds, right. and especially in the city right. where they, they blow and A congregate. Yeah. So you have this one plant that germinates right. 
and then the next one right. is a different it's not the same plant it's a new germinated plant yeah. so if you're using that clean up 365 mm -hmm. then you are doing something that'll prevent yeah, that'll the prevent other ones it. from coming up yeah that's the that's the main product there yeah because you know you got it's not like one plant has uh, two or three seeds right what no. you say you're saying hundreds and thousands. Some right, of these and they can... come in from all areas. I mean, right. birds. I mean, right. my biggest spreader of seeds in my yard uh -huh. is stupid birds where right. they'll go and they'll eat that wild mulberry right. that's around the corner from <laughs> yeah, me, and then all right. of a sudden I've got thousands of mulberry thousands trees. Of mulberries. Oh, my God. I, I can't stand them. Yeah. Oh, I hate it. Another, another situation is dormancy of those seeds. They yes. Can, they can stick around for a couple that's right. of years or even more. And and anybody who's had a garden knows that when, you know, they don't really have many weeds and then they turn over their garden and all of a sudden oh. the weeds are sprouting like it's their lawn. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it's because they've remained dormant in the soil mm -hmm. until they were brought to the surface. Wow. So And that and that uh, clean up 365 will prevent that from happening. Right. Correct? But again, it's a non selective herbicide yeah, so where it's gonna careful. kill everything. That's right. So it's gonna watch kill everything. Yeah. And your uh, shrubs and trees too. Well, no. Not, not your you, he, trees. If you spray it on it. Oh, yeah. It will. Yeah. If you spray it next to it, it's not because it will stay where it's sprayed. Right. Now, if you like, if it's a windy day and you're spraying and all of a sudden it blows yeah, up on an azalea, it's going to, yeah. it's going to hurt it. Yeah. It's going to fuck and, it. And uh, confession, I have my uh -huh. hand, my right hand up. Okay. I sprayed Roundup and I was too lazy to bend down far enough and I killed one of my oh, uh, crimson pygmy barberry that oh, was really old and so now it's half dead oh, <laughs> because I sprayed it and and it was oh, it was kind of worked in there and I said really? oh man I'm like tired I'm just and then yeah. blew right into yeah. it oh, wow. yeah no I just uh -huh. was hoping that it would be all right yeah, it didn't work <laughs> I killed it <laughs> he killed it so all. you've got to be careful where you're yeah. spraying but. Yeah. That's there tough. are a ha and there are a handful of plants, by the way, that have chlorophyll in their stems. Um, like for instance, golden chain tree is one that, if you look at the trunk, it's green, right. and there's actually active chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. So if you actually spray the trunk, you're not spraying the foliage; you're spraying the trunk. It's going to kill it. Mm -hmm. sure. So you've got to be careful not to spray your ornamentals, but anything you do spray mm -hmm. is it it will kill, and it's. And it kills it in a different way. It's not like it poisons it to death. You know, it, it makes a ground poison. Um, I remember years ago when it first came out, they, they were kind of saying, well, it tricks it into thinking that it's not getting any sunlight right. and kills it that way. Yeah. And that way they always said it's down to the roots and all. Oh, when boy. they first started promoting it, it's yeah. down to the roots and all because everything else would just kill the top wow. and like burn the top off. And then the roots would just let the plant keep growing. Yeah. So Frank, mm -hmm. clean up 365. Yeah. Find it, Fine. use it. You're going to have to spray a couple of times mm -hmm. because you're going to have small uh, plants that are like in between that germination mm -hmm. stage. So, but once you get a handle on it, you know it's not going to be one and done. Mm -hmm. You're you're going to spend a season cleaning up your areas. But once you do, mm -hmm. then you're not going to have the seeds that are sprouting like you have now, where it's just a compounded problem over and over. Roundup 365. Well, yeah. no, uh, clean, up clean up 365. Yeah. Now, now when he sprays it, he's got to be careful that he doesn't step in it. Like, will that be a problem or, or not? Not really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He doesn't have grass probably. I mean, right? I mean, if it's wet on your shoe. Yeah. But be okay. I don't want it on my shoes. Okay. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> I walk backwards. Okay. You know, yeah. when I just avoid stepping in avoid it. Stepping so that's, it, yeah. you know, that's advice. And that also, once it's dry, uh -huh. you're good. And don't do it before it rain. But if it does rain, as long as it dries on the plant, you're mm -hmm. fine. And it works quickly, right? Yeah. Pretty quick. You know, you'll see it within a week. Yeah. That it's killing things good. off. And also, if weeds are real tall, like if you have three-foot weeds, uh -huh. you should cut them down. Cut them down, yeah. You get a weed whacker and just Boom. knock them down. Yeah. Let it flush out a little bit of foliage and then sure. spray it. Don't do it like right after you hit it with the weed whacker. Right. Like if you got real tall stuff, which sounds like he might. Yeah, he might have had that. And yeah. keep in mind, if you're using a weed whacker and you're knocking the seed heads off oh. before they get to pollinate so that you don't. So if it's in flower mm -hmm. and you knock it down, then you won't have the seeds Did that are it. pollinated and aren't going to cause a problem. But if you're letting them go to flower and then seed. Oh, boy. You got a problem. Yeah. So keep keep on on top of that. I don't right, know. Frank. All right. So Frank, keep an eye on it. Mitch, yep. did you understand that?
Yeah, he's shaking his head yes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> sure he is. <laughs> anyway, clean up, preen, clean no up. weed barrier. Yep. Not a fan of weed barrier. Uh, the, what happens is that the rotting debris on top germinates the seed anyway. Seed, uh, yeah. So I've you got to pull it out and spray it. It's, it's a waste. Yeah, it it's is. a waste, and then you can't plant bulbs or anything. No, you can't. All right, we're going to be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Coast of Maine's Organic Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the best soil for raised bed gardens, planter boxes, and container gardens. It grows amazing vegetables. It is made with a mixture of manure compost, worm castings, lobster and kelp meal, mycorrhiza, green sand, and biochar. It's ready to use straight out of the bag with no need for additional components or tilling. If you love growing fresh and hearty vegetables, herbs, and flowers, Coast of Maine's Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the perfect choice for you. At Coast of Maine, we believe in growing organically and buying locally. Castine Organic Raised Bed Mix can be found at these fine stores. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Uh, Richard texted us with his own weed problems in his lawn. Listen to his text. Good day, guys. I started my lawn program according to Julio's lawn calendar. Did step one along with Bonide Ultra. Waited for dandelions, but none came up, so did step two, end of April. I now have lots of weeds in the lawn. Long, skinny blades, small fern type, but no broadleaf. Is there anything I can do now, or am I doomed for the rest of the summer because of the hot weather? Bonide says not to use in high temperatures. Thanks. Loyal listener, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much, Richard. Yep. You know what's not in here? What? You didn't do a second application of crabgrass control. Oh, yeah, I know. Whew. That would have saved some of that. That's right. But I think the, the grassy-type weeds that he's seeing, it's mm-hmm. not sedge. And that has to be, you have to use, yeah, use a that. nut sedge control. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. And that will control that, that other weed that he's without seeing a picture of it. I don't want right. to guess, right. you know, sometimes it could be wild geranium. It mm-hmm. could be a number of things. Right. If the nut sedge control doesn't touch it, then use the weed beater ultra. Now, the, another reason why he doesn't have dandelions is because he used the weed beater ultra, ultra yeah, and totally. that cleaned everything up. Yeah. That that was you mentioned in the last segment about perennial weeds, right? And that's perennial what weed beater ultra doing at the first step, along with your crabgrass control. It's almost like we're talking to Frank, where you have mm-hmm. control of the weeds that you have by using weed beater ultra, and then using the pre-emergent crabgrass control to prevent more weeds mm-hmm. from coming. Because now, they're dormant underneath. Some right. Of them. There's yep. those seeds that seeds, we talked yeah. about. Yeah, plenty of them. <laughs> yep. And so what should he do? The, he should go and use the nutgrass control. He has to figure out what that other weed is. Mm. So he's going to use the nutgrass control. And the way nutgrass, you know it's nutgrass because it's a little yellower than the rest of the lawn. Yeah, yeah. The blade is a little wider. Mm. And it grows faster than the rest of the lawn. So you cut your grass and everything looks even. Then all of a sudden, like two days go by. And it's like, how come that stupid grass is taller? I don't understand. (laughs) And that a lot of times it's in wet areas. Like if you have a slow draining area Mm -hmm. that seems to be a little wetter, it's going to grow there. That's right. Yep. You're going to find it in your beds of your landscape. Uh, Sure. I I was telling you this morning about my, I've got that cut flower garden in front of my house. (laughs) That's and right. it's it, there's all nut sedge oh, grown nutsedge. under it. Yeah. I've been keeping it pretty well watered, and yeah. nut sedge mm-hmm. is a actual underground. The whole reason it's called nut sedge is the grass doesn't look like a nut, but what's growing underneath the ground looks like a nut. nut. So, so it's grown like a little bulb. Bulb, yeah, at the and, bottom. And that that's why sometimes when you're pulling them out, you see the little bulb. The there. bulb stays in the ground, just keeps on growing, and you just get exercise <laughs> pulling those weeds out. <laughs> that's right. So spraying it again with a um, a, a good nut sedge control. Um, I know that there's one like we have one by Fertilome that that is very good. A Bonite's got one, and you'll see. And it will be listed, and you have to use the one that's labeled for that. Right. You know, a lot of times you'll see clover mentioned, nut sedge, mm-hmm. clover. You know, but but really, um, make sure it says nut sedge before before you do anything else. Also, if you have kalinga, that's that's another oh. one, right? Yeah, you had that last uh, year. I didn't still you? have it. Oh, you still got it? Oh yeah. my gosh. The the weird part is kalinga is a very fine bladed sedge, right. which is. Uh, n- Nutgrass is a type of sedge, right. and where it looks okay, like I, I've told the story on air before, where somebody came in and said, asked for the seed. Do you have the seed for this? <laughs> and it's like, it's like it's no, pretty, huh? no, you can come and yeah. dig it out and, yeah. from my yard, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> because what happens is in the fall it gets this weird like three bladed seed head on top of it, and it comes back every year, and I don't know, I. I, I'm going to have to round up my entire yard Ooh. and redo it, my or I'm just going to try to live with it. Uh, now, the sedge control from Fertilum mm-hmm. will work on it and will kill it, but at this point, I don't have any other grass there. Other grass. Wow. So, mm, and, sh- and you know what the true. rule of thumb is? Do I renovate or do I eradicate? <laughs> if it's 50% more weeds... You just start from scratch. scratch again, Get yeah. rid of it all and start from scratch with seed or sod. Really? Yeah. So that's the best way to go. Can you seed right now, Julio? Can you seed right now? Yeah, you can seed right now. You just need to supplement it with water. Yeah, that's all. Grass seed's gonna germinate. You're yeah. gonna cover it with a little it's gonna grow fine. It's gonna grow fine, yeah. It's gonna grow fine. So don't be afraid yeah. to, to seed now. Now another thing he said on here too is that um something about the hot weather. Right. He was doomed the rest of the summer because of the hot weather. Yeah, that's right. Because they say don't spray, don't spray it. Uh, when it's above 85 Five degrees. degrees. Right. That's ambient temperature. Mm. So you're not going out like in a, as a knucklehead, going in the middle of the day when it's the hardest part of the day, degrees, burning yeah. your plants. Right. But if you spray in the morning mm-hmm. when it's still cool, right. you're good. You're fine. As long yeah. as it dries on that plant, right. by the time it gets to that 85 degrees, you're good. Yeah, you're fine. And I always like spraying in the morning rather than at night. Yeah, it's too hot. You know, it, it's not that it's too hot. It's just that where you're, you can be inviting disease problems. Oh, yeah. You know, sure, so yeah. so if you spray in the morning, mm-hmm. 
then it's still cool. It's going to dry on the plant, oh, and then nice. it's going to be doing its work right away. There you go. That's rather wise. than staying wet all night. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Anything to anything to add, Hul? No, I think we hit it all. I think he, you know, I he just so. needs to, uh, you know, see the difference between the uh, broadleaf and the uh, sedges. Right. And he said yeah. there was no broadleaf, but it's that no. other one that that he talked yeah. about. Skinny blade. I well again, a skinny blade is is not sedge. I'm yeah. so I'm sure of it. Probably. So it's a type of sedge. Yeah. But the Fern? the other one, I would try using what he used before, is the weed beater ultra, ultra. bonite weed beater bolt ultra. But he also forgot the step, the crabgrass control. That's right. The second crabgrass control could is be a big important. help. Yeah, you know it's not going to stop that nut sedge, right. but it will stop dozens of other weeds sure so all right all right we'll be right back in the garden right after this hi this is len schroeder from bloomers in the garden do you have a landscape garden or plant question if so call or text us using the bloomers in the garden hotline dial 609-685-1880 that's 609-685-1880 Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Have you ever dealt with dead areas in your lawn that pull up like carpet? You most likely are the victim of the Japanese beetle larva eating your roots of your turf. Grubs sever the roots from the crown of the grass plant, causing the turf from being unable to take in water. It leaves you with a dead carpet of grass. Fertilum is a solution to stop those pesky grubs from destroying your lawn. High Yield Grub Free Zone is a season-long grub control that protects your grass from the damage caused by grubs, mole crickets, larva of the European crane fly, green june beetles, bill bugs, and many more subsurface insects. So if you use VPG High Yield Grub Free Zone and protect your lawn, it's an easy-to-use product and does all the work. Simply spread it and water it in. It's that easy. Your lawn will be protected from grubs and dozens of other lawn feeding insects. Use the product that professionals use, High Yield Grub Free Zone. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's High Yield Grub Free Zone and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Del Cab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, I received a text message from Brandy. Oh, wow. Brandy's a former employee who is having problems Mm -hmm. with her sunflower plant, but that's not the whole story. Here's what she had to say. She said, hey, Len, it's Brandy. I have a question for you. My sunflower plant has holes in its leaves. Everything I read 
says baking soda and dish soap. <laughs> what would you recommend? <laughs> Toothpaste. My reply is stop looking on the internet. <laughs> Spray with Bonide 8, Spinosad, or Captain Jack's. The internet kills more plants than it helps. And then Brandy, she she knew better. She yeah. used to have a position to bloom, but right. she dealt with it. She said, darn it, I knew it. I was right all along. I trusted myself this year to have sunflower, and it's gorgeous. But these little aphids are all over it. I'm like going right now to get Captain Jack's. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Julio, how oh, often goodness. are we like correcting oh, my misinformation from the internet? Unbelievable. I think it? you need a combination of bleach, bleach. and you're going to use yeah. that. And oh, the no, leaves don't look. Don't forget the vinegar. <laughs> yeah, but then, like, and my plant doesn't look right. It's no. like, yeah, because all those things are more dangerous to your plant than yeah. the sprays on the Ooh. shelf, but it's organic. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. Everybody, uh, go to your local garden center. You'll get it's the clearinghouse for yeah. good information. That's right. The internet That's right. is a black hole of dead it plants. Is. <laughs> you can't go. You can't go to uh, you know to the box stores and get bleach and just pour the whole thing. Well, I, I mean, like, it's like, like oh, I'll save money by using Dawn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like right. oh, oh my I goodness. mean, I don't know. It drives it drives me crazy. Yeah. As you can't, as you all can tell. Somebody uh, started I have a this, pet huh? Peeve yeah. For it. And there's and the great thing is is that it it creates enthusiasm and that there's a lot of good sites that are out there. But they're also regional where you could be reading what they use in Texas, mm -hmm. which doesn't apply, doesn't apply to yeah. New York or yeah. Philadelphia or yeah. New Jersey. That happens all the time. And especially with plant recommendations mm -hmm. where people that like it's just not hardy by us. Yeah. Yeah. So your internet search no. should be for amusement only. Yeah, that's, I would <laughs> not, say that. Yeah. You know, not for <laughs> not for going uh -huh. and trying to get like really right. good horticultural knowledge. Yeah. And rapid it's gotta but, be you know, reputable. I, I take that back. Go ahead. If you do your search and then do dot edu, mm -hmm. you'll pull up college information right. from Rutgers, mm -hmm. Penn State. Yeah. I mean all the all the uh, the horticultural college Cornell, Cornell, all the horticultural yeah. colleges, you'll get good, decent information. Yeah. Right. Most of the time, because yeah. sometimes their practical advice is not very practical, right. but you at least will be getting truth rather than people that Fiction. like are trying to be the mad <laughs> scientists in their kitchen and That's right. you know, <laughs> I don't know. They already got they got their own labs. Is that they what do? <laughs> they, I mean, I swear. So so be easy with the right. internet. You know, uh, at, go to your local garden Gosh, center for a clearinghouse yeah. of information and say, hey, you know, I heard that I should use vinegar to kill aphids on my begonias and like the <laughs> and just please tolerate the rolling of the eyes because we've answered questions like this all the time and we was just please come to us right. <laughs> we can help we can help okay. and then because you know what bothers me most what's that people do this uh -huh. and then they kill their plants right. and they say now i have a brown thumb yeah i can't grow any plants i have a brown thumb <laughs> <laughs> it, goes, it, it happens i know they get discouraged and everything else yeah, right so oh, i know again. that's the problem we have with that all right Brandy, yeah. Brandy, you, you remember Brandy? Oh yeah, I remember Brandy. Brandy very cool. Yeah. Brandy was fun. Yeah. Brandy was fun. Yeah. All right, we've got yeah. a, another break coming up. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. 
Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, Ed, we got a call on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline from a caller growing zucchini squash. Listen to what he had to say. Yeah, I have a question about my zucchini plants. Every year I seem to plant them, they come up, and then they, all of a sudden they die. They seem to be getting a worm in them. Is there any way I could prevent this from happening? Thank you. Bye. Hey, we tackled this once before. Which we did. Early yep. spring. Early, yeah. Really. And uh, first of all, cucumber beetles yeah. could be two things. Cu- mm-hmm. Cucumber beetles or squash vine borer. Let's deal with cucumber beetles first. Mm-hmm. Uh, cucumber beetles have long antennae and that yeah. they're Really, kind of pretty. They they're yeah, pretty. like a, a a chartreuse with either a black dots or black stripes. stripes. Yeah. But what they bring is they bring a bacterial wilt disease, and that the vines collapse and the foliage collapse and the whole plant dies. So they're bringing this disease, and it's in the stomach. Of this insect. So as they're chewing and they're eating, their saliva is spreading it to the plant. Wow. Uh, you got to work early. And using, um, I like the fact that you can use DE, diatomaceous earth, and it has a mechanical mode of action to where if they crawl over it, it slices. Slices them. This sounds really, this sounds really nice. But yeah. Anybody, hey, if you play video games, you see this all the time, where it slices up the stomach oh, of, of the insect and kills it that way. Okay. Um because that way you don't necessarily have to be spraying a poison. Um, over, yeah. You know, where, you know, your second one would be like there's an organic tomato and vegetable dust. It has mm-hmm. sulfur and pyrethrins, but you got to keep in mind the pyrethrins are, they break down in sunlight. So you do have to reapply. Um, probably my number one is eight. It again uses the, organic chemistry of a pyrethrin but it's man-made and it improves the longevity of it safe for vegetables safe yep all right so that is again it's a cucumber beetle and it's a bacterial wilt disease that that arrived with them with unfortunately that, yeah. there's a lot of that's where like rose rosette disease not from that insect but the yeah. same type of thing same where it's the, the, the insect 
uh, like of a thrip goes mm-hmm. and infects the plant. Yeah. So and it spreads. And also you got to remember too is that you got to clean up your garden because these bugs, well, both of the ones we're going to talk about, will overwinter wow. in your garden. Yeah. Uh, squash fine borers, about an inch long caterpillar. Okay, uh, it has a brown head and it tunnels inside the stems of any types of pumpkin squash. I mean, wow. it's, everybody knows it's, it's zucchini squash for sure, but all types of squash. And that the vines could have one right. that's just basically chowing down the center of the of the stem, and therefore the vines collapse and it just kills it. But again, it's it it, it has to be controlled early. Uh, that again, that worm doesn't look anything like the adults, where the adults almost look like a fly with a little bit of an orange. It's a black. With an orange, orange yeah. with an orange on the abdomen, um, again, when the it's and it's most prevalent when your plants are starting to flower. So what happens is that that this the adult comes and it lays its egg, and its eggs into or near the flower, and then when they hatch, the caterpillars they go and they bore into the stems, and then they'll just. Feed, and that there's two generations wow. a year, by the way. Wow! So what happens is you get that thing where your, you know, where your vines are collapsing, right. wow. and that Oof. it's gonna re- they're gonna have another generation coming back, and it's gonna come back. So wow. what do, what do you do? What do you do? First, you want to kill the adults before okay. they lay eggs, and they need to do regular applications. and And I like Bonite's Garden Dust. That's- it's going to sulfur and polyurethrin. It has copper wow. for disease control because sure. anybody who's grown squash and pumpkins and cucumbers know that they are susceptible to getting powdery mildew. Mm-hmm. You want to maybe avoid it when it's like we had like 96 90, degrees. Yeah. You want to maybe cut back on that. But again, you're not doing it. You're at controlling the second generation at this point. Mm-hmm. Those those first eggs are hatched and they're inside your squash plants right yeah, now already in there some people can go and they'll try to take either a razor blade or a small knife and try to find it mm-hmm. but at that point yeah, things aren't good yeah things aren't good wow again it's you're going to do this treatment like every seven to ten days but you're going after the adults before mm-hmm. they re- lay the eggs so again it, it's you want to start early when they first begin to flower. When they first begin to flower, mm-hmm. and, lo- and again, clean up. Don't leave don't your leave anything, don't yeah. leave your uh, your vines just sit there in the ground. Mm-hmm. Clean them up, clean pick them up, up, put them in the trash, or yeah. put them in. I wouldn't even put them in the compost pile. Yeah. I would put them right in the trash. The trash, yeah. Because again, you're going to be infecting other plants next year, mm-hmm. especially cucumber beetle, where that's the disease issue that you're having problems with. Mm-hmm. To come up. Wow. Yeah. So again, brutal. you know, sorry to tell you, but you know, you, you right now are struggling because those bores are protected inside that stem. And no matter what you spray at this point, you're not going to control them, yeah. but at least maybe you might, when they pupate and they become adults, Later on. you're going to be con- trying to control the adults. So that's really all you can do at this point. But next spring, make sure as soon as they begin to flower that you're spraying yeah, every yeah. seven to 10 days, mm-hmm just to keep them under control. Yeah. You know, you think about when there's giant fields of pumpkins, mm-hmm. they are spraying pumpkins yeah. so that they can get the yield without spraying. They're gonna you know, they're not going to get anything. Yeah, so done. again, it, it's unfortunate, but it is something yeah. that you need to do. Yeah. Any, yeah. any, any questions, Julio? No, they're just like weeds. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, in a way. Go, yeah, in a way, because they're in a way, going right? You know, yeah, over it, winter. It is. It is. Yeah. like where, one, you know, one <laughs> adult is going to lay multiple eggs, yeah. just like multiple seed eggs. And they go down into the ground. Yeah. And, oh, brother, here we go again. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. 
let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Coast of Maine's Organic Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the best soil for raised bed gardens, planter boxes, and container gardens. It grows amazing vegetables. It is made with a mixture of manure compost, worm castings, lobster and kelp meal, mycorrhiza, green sand, and biochar. It's ready to use straight out of the bag with no need for additional components or tilling. If you love growing fresh and hearty vegetables, herbs, and flowers, Coast of Maine's Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the perfect choice for you. At Coast of Maine, we believe in growing organically and buying locally. Castine Organic Raised Bed Mix can be found at these fine stores. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants, and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural-only garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider, or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So this week, what's bugging you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, you know, Julio, I think that we should have it like a movie, like coming uh-huh. to a theater near you, coming to a <laughs> garden near you, Spotted yeah, Lanternfly. That's right. <laughs> Our neighborhoods around oh, Bloomers, uh, we finally have been inundated. Yes. Um, jumped across the river from Philadelphia, and I know that they're getting it up in North Jersey finally and, and parts of New York yes, and Connecticut. Yes, I know. But this year, I mean, how many people were in saying, I have these little black bugs scurrying yeah. all over the round, right? Yeah. I just heard it this morning. Heard it again this morning. Yeah, I did. So here's where we're at. Instar is basically the stage of a developing spotted lanternfly. Most of the spring so far in the summer, they've been black and they, they've just gotten to different sizes. But right now they're starting to get that red little spot in it. And and they kind of look like spiders in a way because they're small, but they move pretty quickly. Well, at, again, anybody who has dealt with this, and, and Julio, we, we moved our studios are now um, in a different area of Bal Kinwood, but, but where, where our studios were before, yeah. that yeah. building was covered. covered. And this is an urban, beautiful... Yeah building mm-hmm. but the the damn spot and lanternfly are crawling up oh, you'd wow. walk in the parking lot and it'd be like the parting of the red sea yeah, it was unbelievable, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Oh, so again wow. coming to a parking lot near you <laughs> so right. here's what's happening so this next instar stage mm. i want you to go out and start banding your trees can you can you explain what banding is Julio? Yeah, banding is like a sticky substance it's goes around the tree, and uh, as uh, the SLF starts crawling up or down, they're going to get stuck, 
Right. And SLF, for those of you out there, oh, no, you well, hipsters, that's a <laughs> cool way to say spotted right. lantern fly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. <laughs> anyway, um, right. so with that banding, so it'll they'll catch them on there. So it's like fly paper for yeah. your tree. It is, yeah. You know, I, I have it just like giving your tree a sticky turtleneck. Yeah. You know? So you put <laughs> it on right. around your tree. That's right. And that they want to climb up to lay their eggs. Most of the the spotted lanternfly right now are close to the ground. Those eggs have hatched. And so what happens is that, so if we start in the fall after the eggs are laid, the eggs are laid up tall and high, then they climb down the trunk of the tree or the fence or the building or wherever. And then they do their thing and scurry around. And then as they mature, they go back up to the tree because they're gonna they're gonna lay their eggs again. So if you start banding your trees now, by the time you really get to it, because you know it's important to do, but you put it off, that you actually will be in time to do some good. And you'll be able to catch them when they're starting to mate and when they're starting to because that starts happening anywhere between August and October. Yeah, pretty soon. You know, so and again, it's different in star stages. We're different. Mm-hmm. They'll just use stages. Yeah, stages. And that the, the banding will catch juveniles and adults and will prevent the eggs from being laid. So this is going to sound evil, but they, <laughs> they basically get stuck on the tree before they have a chance to lay their eggs. Wow, that's a good thing. You know, that, that's what we want. Yeah, that's what, we, yeah. It, it is a scourge. Yeah. It is a scourge. And those of you that are in our listening area that don't know what spotted lanternfly, it does damage by feeding on plants. But it also, if anybody knows aphids or has heard of the word sun, uh, uh, honeydew, honeydew is poop. Okay? <laughs> Basically what happens is that these insects secrete honeydew. And that's a nice, again, nice way of saying we all know what it is. Well, you do now. And it covers your cars. It covers your patio furniture. It, it, yeah. It's just gross. And so anything underneath of it, it's you're like, it's just ruined. Oof. It's sticky. And then even like ants come and will feed on it. So it now compounds the problem. Worse, worse. And mm. so if you don't do this, you're, sp- yeah, you're, you're, you're spreading worse. this. Even more. Yes, it, it is not. Yeah. And this has only been around since, I think, 2014 that's it yeah. 2014 mm-hmm. and they do have natural predators but not enough to keep them in check yeah. it's it is a bad, it's bad. bug yeah, it's it is a bad bug and, and i still think rutgers and penn state want you if you see them they're trying to keep track of how the far the spread is for the yeah. spotted lantern fly if you see them off. The, uh, just go online and just do uh, spotted lantern fly reporting and then you'll yeah. a number will pop up and it'll tell you like either you call them or you can right. email them or like even snap a picture and just send it to them. They want to know how far this is spreading. Right. When we were in Ohio, we, we were talking a couple of weeks ago uh, about being in Ohio and we were in Columbus. They didn't even hear of it. Yeah, They've never heard of it. I was like, yeah. spotted lanternfly? What's, What's that? that? Yeah. It's like, huh? What? You haven't heard of that? <laughs> yeah. We're here. It's like... It's like- you know, it's like a Japanese horror movie. Yeah, it it's is. it's coming to take it's over. over. Yeah. So yeah. band your it's trees. It, that that little step. I mean, yeah, you're you're gonna look like you have a, a band of dead bugs on your tree, but hey. you're gonna rather than it's your trees right. being dead or yeah. having a black coated yeah. patio. Yeah, it's terrible. So again, that's what you should be doing now. Yep. Anything to add? No, like you said, it's coming up to the adult stage pretty soon in August. Right. So it, that's a little tougher, isn't it? it they're so big. Yeah. They big. They go. They, they hop, go by they these. Hop. You know, right now they're they're kind of small and manageable. Right. Where and you can spray, you know, Captain Jack's espinosa Jack's. organic mm-hmm. that works. Um, pyrethrins or you may remember pyrethrins. Anything with a thrin on the end right. of the active ingredient, mm-hmm. like delta methrin, and the, you'll look at the active ingredient. Anything with a thrin on it is a uh let's see it's it's a synthetic pyrethrin which we talked about earlier in the show where it is a pyrethrins are taken from the chrysanthemum flower and that they degrade in sunlight so you put it on you hit the bug you kill it 
but if you put it on, don't hit the bug, and a bug walks over it after a couple hours, it's not going to do anything because the sunlight stopped it from working. Mm -hmm. Where what scientists have done is that they've taken those same properties and have been able to extend the life of the insecticide. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and that that's, again, that's eight is probably the, the one that I would recommend first. You can spray them, but the most effective method is by using their own uh, habits against them where they want to climb back oh, up yeah. that tree. And if you yeah. put that sticky tape on there, That's and the that is the best way to go. Best they call way, it yep. banding. banding. They yep. call it banding. And most of your local garden centers will have all of that. Yeah. All right. We've got to take all a right. break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m., WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Julio, down by the Julio oh, another boy. lots of go, lots of gardening problems this yeah. week. Weeds and insects. Weeds and insects, boy. I <laughs> yeah. tell you what. <laughs> All right. Hey, I want to give a yeah. shout out to Find It in Fishtown. Thank you guys. We appreciate you mentioning us on your show. We're returning the favor. That's Listen right. right here, part of the Beasley family. Mm -hmm. Also, join Julio and I here next week at this same time, right sure. here in the garden. Mm -hmm. Next time you visit your favorite garden center, greenhouse, or nursery, tell them you listen to Bloomers in the Garden. Thank you to producer extraordinaire Brett Kronberger. Thank you, and we'll see you next week right here in the garden. See you in the garden. <laughs>